It's not about looking rich, it's about being rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you're like me, then you're not rich. But we've all imagined what it would be like to roll around in a fancy car. Fending off the ladies, of course. Well, I was put on YouTube to let you know that there's scientific proof that women are more attracted to guys that drive nice cars, even if they won't admit it. Because after all, if you drive a nice car, you must be a nice guy. So here are six ideal cars that will make you Mr. Nice Guy. Oh, and an honorable mention, baby, that are all less than you'd spend on a brand new Honda Civic EXL. Oh, and you'll want to stay till the end because the last car on this list I currently own, and from personal experience, it's a chick magnet and it makes you look rich. Let's go. Not only do women find men that drive Porsches more attractive, but men find women that drive Porsches more attractive too. Just think about the last time that you saw a girl driving a Porsche. She instantly went up a couple notches on the hot or not scale. So as long as other people think that you have good taste in cars and can afford the repairs of a high-end sports car, then you must be rich, right? And the Porsche Boxster, specifically the second generation, which came out in 2005, is one of the most cost-effective ways to get into an attractive brand that just oozes success. And the main reason that you want to get into a second generation over a first is the first gen had major engine issues, less power, and the styling just wasn't on point. But the second gen is a beautiful drop top two seater, mid engine sports car with wide fenders, and it also sports a bulge that would make Hugh Hefner jealous. Plus, one of my favorite designs of the second generation Boxster are the headlights, which if you squint a little, have an eerily similar look to the ideal Carrera GTs. And I'm not complaining. You can either snag a base Boxster, which has a 2.7 liter pushing out 236 horses, or its bigger brother, the Boxster S, with a 3.2 liter flat six motor pushing out 276 horsepower. Either way, they're cheap cars that will make you look rich. So use the ideal car strategies to snag your ideal Porsche Boxster, and then swap the stock wheels for some nice 19s, and I can pretty much guarantee you'll get front row parking the next time you valet your car. Uh, or if you're like me and you aren't rich, you'll at least get some looks while you drive by the valet. <laughs> hey you, do you know why chicken coops only have two doors? Because if it had four, it would be a sedan. And the Audi B8 S4 sedan is seriously something special. You get a glorious supercharged three liter direct injected V6 with 333 horsepower and 325 foot pounds of torque on tap. <laughs> Plus, that confidence-inspiring Audi Quattro all-wheel drive easily puts the power to the ground. And with a simple tune, you'll be looking at 100 extra horsepower over stock. Gah, I f love force induction cars, but performance isn't necessarily why we're here. Rather, it's to look rich. And those Audi rings make a statement. Also, simple design cues like unique bumpers, grill, quad exhaust, and a few other nice touches set this car apart from the lesser Audi A4. I mean, just the fact that you can get a high performance Audi S4 for well under the price of a new Civic is thanks to this BEA beautiful thing called depreciation. Well, I guess it depends on which side of depreciation you stand on. Cause buying a car and losing 100K on it would absolutely suck. The B8 S4 is really a great car, and I was considering buying one before I purchased the fourth car on this list. It's just a classy, sexy, and well-performing bargain of a sports car. Which reminds me of one of my good friends who's a blonde and used to have a B8 S4. And one day when she was cruising a little too fast on the freeway, and then she got pulled over by a blonde cop for speeding, the cop strutted up and asked her for a driver's license. My friend just dug and dug and dug through her purse and couldn't find it. So she asked, what does it look like? The policewoman responded and said, it's square and has your picture on it. My friend finally found a square mirror in her purse, looked at it and handed it to the policewoman. The blonde officer looks into the mirror and then hands it back to my friend saying, you're good to go. I didn't know that you're a cop. <laughs> General Motors has positioned Cadillac as the brand that's supposed to compete with the likes of BMW, Lexus, Audi, and Mercedes. And if you roll up in a car from any of the brands that I just mentioned, I don't think that people would necessarily think that you're poor. And that is why the Cadillac CTS-V Coupe is a lot like nothing else. Think about it for a second. GM took an ultra luxury car brand and decided to go wild with it. And I mean absolutely wild. You got neck snapping good looks. 
with performance that'll scare the side skirts off the competition. Yeah, let's talk about performance for a second. At the time, it was the most powerful production coupe from Cadillac in its history. And there's a very good explanation for that. That's pretty simple. They just shoehorned a supercharged pushrod aluminum block V8 under the hood, pumping out, you know, just 556 horsepower. And voila, you get one of the fastest sports cars ever produced, ripping from zero to 60 in just four seconds. See, Cadillac took the already successful V formula with their hot four-door sedan and built a vehicle that is, in a sense, the only vehicle of its kind on the road. Not only will it roast almost everything out there in a straight line, but you'll also look like Mr. Moneybags rolling up to any black tie affair. Because after all, looking rich isn't about how much you can spend. It's about how little you can spend to make yourself look rich. And the CTSV Coupe is one of the best bangs for your buck. This list would not be complete without a BMW on the list. And the E90 and E92 M3 are some of the best bargains right now, period. The E90 is the four-door version M3, while the E92 is the two-door and more sporty looking of the two. They both carry that award-winning S65 V8 powerhouse that was forged in the depths of Mount Doom from the E60 M5 engine. Now, the engine in the BMW M3 is the little engine that could because it won the International Engine of the Year Award in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, and 2012. So uh, this car is gonna make you look like a winner. That's for sure. And that is exactly how I felt when I bought mine a couple years ago. But you can check out over here. What's crazy is that when I picked up my E90 M3, all my friends thought I got a pay raise, which uh, couldn't have been further from the truth because I had just started doing YouTube full time. And as many of you guys probably know, it takes a ton of time and money to build a channel. Man, that was over two years ago. It's crazy how far this channel has come because of you guys. Anyway, back on track. I can guarantee that if you roll around in an ideal M3, your friends, family, and even that cute barista down the street will think that you've fallen into some money. Plus, the one thing that I wasn't prepared for was how much of a conversation starter it was. I had the four-door sedan M3, which blends in a little bit more than the coupe. It's still athletic looking with awesome fender flares and the iconic exhaust tips. Oh, and the brakes were literally the best I've ever experienced. You literally had to take duct tape to keep your eyes in your sockets. Just just look at how big these things are. These are easily some of the biggest brake calipers I have ever seen. The coupe is a wolf in wolf's clothing, while the sedan is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Which one would be your ideal M3? If you're ready to boost your looks and ego, the E90 E92 M3 is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Oh, I almost forgot. Do you know the difference between BMWs and porcupines? Porcupines carry their pricks on the outside. So be careful if you pick up a BMW because you don't want to become a so if you were to ask me which sport luxury coupe will break next but won't break your bank, I'd have to say that the Infiniti Q60 is one hell of a candidate. Infiniti is one of those brands that just makes great looking cars and the Q60 is no exception. If you remember the Infiniti G35 and G37, they had that fun, playful demeanor with all the right looks to back it up. And the Q60, which is the younger brother of those cars, also has those same fun dynamics. Oh, and if you're familiar with the VQ engine sounds, you have to listen to this. Isn't that just wonderful? Stock, it may be in the running for the most ideal exhaust note. Sans a supercar, of course. And the sharp, sporty looks, coupled with the luxurious interior, make this thing a total showstopper. Showstopper. Oh, and one more thing. Infinity as a brand is just kind of misunderstood, which I actually think makes these cars even more luxurious. You see, Infinity is the luxury vehicle division of Nissan, just like Cadillac is for GM and Lexus is for Toyota. Yet, I think that less people know about Infinity. So when you're rolling up in one, people might just think that you're rolling in a low production car, which makes you look rich. Now, before we get to the ultimate showstopper, here is the honorable mention, baby. <laughs> Since we were just talking about an Infiniti, it's only fitting that the honorable mention is a Nissan. And it's the Nissan 370Z to be exact. This beast is a beautiful two-door, two-seater sports car that's been around for the past 10 years or so. The successor of the uber successful Nissan 350Z, the 370Z is lighter, more powerful, and a better looking of its older brother. And it commands respect with its eye-catchy head and tail lights blended perfectly into the rest of the car's styling. And although it wasn't that expensive, expensive when new, costing in the mid 30s. It's a small, fast, and fun sports car that will make you look like you get your shit 
done. And as I found out, people that get their shit done are usually making more money. So as you rip around with the 3.7 liter V6, making all those proper intoxicating sounds, people watching won't be wondering if you're successful, rather how successful. If you want the best value sports car out there, period, don't look any further than the Porsche 997-911. Trust me, after buying my ideal 997-911 and all the fun that I've had with it, I just couldn't help but buy a 996-911, which I'll be introducing to the channel here shortly. More to come, you guys, because I am stoked to share it with you. As for the 997, which you can pick up for less than a new Civic, you get a car that has the ultimate pedigree, performance, and bargain. The looks are timeless with those curvaceous, luscious, booty delicious hips and the engine is one of the best in the business. And every time, literally every time you pump gas, people will come up and ask you, what job do you have to afford a 911? With a slight smirk, I usually tell them not a very good one and let them know how much I paid. It's always way less than they thought it costs. And you know what else is way less than people think? These cheap sleepers that you should never race. Or check out what YouTube recommends you should watch next. Oh, and please subscribe, but either way, you can't lose and as always keep living that ideal lifestyle.